Hi, this is Trolls from ATO, and in this video, it's my great delight to show you our new HyperTools 1. HyperTools 1 is one of the products that really kicked off ATO and has become stables across the audio industry, whether it's for underscoring or trailers or more cinematic stuff. It's a really wide tool that sort of quickly established the sound for cinematic scoring, whether it's boomers or distortion or new categories such as downers that we invented for the library and many others have done later. And we have these large sounding mega horns or Brahms. We got risers, transforming sounds, hybrid rhythms, synthesizers, all that you would imagine in the normal realm of cinematic scoring, more contemporary, modern, electronic kind of scoring. But HyperTools 1 is a true imagination of the original library. We have all the original content, but it's run through a variety of new scripts and engines and all these new tools that you can use to really mangle and push the sound a lot further. So in this video, I'm going to go through all the main categories, the boomers, distortion, downers, impacts, mega horns, risers, transformers, rhythms, all that stuff. And then I'll also be demonstrating some of the presets. There's an enormous amount of things you can do with our new use interface here. And it's not just the fact that you have access to all the sounds just from the core page here. We also have sequencing here. You can gate the sounds here. You have all these beautiful controls down here. You can reverse the sounds just with one click. You have chaos effects and many, many other things. But why don't we just get into it here? Let's take it from the very top here and let's enter our module. It's kind of funny when we introduced this user interface in the beginning, people actually thought we were building a hardware unit here. And uh, who knows, maybe that's gonna happen someday. But if we click enter here, we're gonna go into the module right here. And uh, let's get started here on the boomers. Um, let me play um, a little bit from each of these different categories. As you can see on all the pages in this video, you're gonna be noticing down here, there's a variety of keys. Each of these keys symbolize a unique sample. So obviously in this video, I cannot go through all of them. There are thousands of samples, uh, but I'm just gonna give you a little bit of a taster from each of these categories. And over here marked in red, you can actually control the tonality uh, of the articulation as well. So if you want in a different pitch, you can just do that via key switches here. But keep it on here in the blue, you're gonna see me trigger different samples here. And um, let's just listen to uh, a couple of samples from each of the individual categories. And after that, we're gonna go and listen uh, more to the individual presets that also comes with the library. There's a variety of presets in the library, really pushing the notion of what hybrid tools can be a lot further. So let's get started. And as you're probably noticing, I'm not playing the sounds in their full sort of sustained. It's going to take a long time just keeping one key down for each of the boomers here. But if you notice here, you're going to see we have three different banks of common boomers and then we have gritty boomers as well. You can see that for a variety of categories in the library, for example, over here on the impacts, you'll see we have natural impacts over here and then we have really these distorted impacts. So very different takes on what a boomer can be, whether it's more natural and acoustic, if you will, or whether it's really gritty and synthesized and distorted and all that stuff. Uh, let me play you a preset with the boomers here and uh, let me just play right now and then I'll explain what's going on because there's so many things you can do with this library. So in this case here, you can see the stack function here is clicked on, meaning that you can actually take different articulations and melt them together or merge them. So right now, for example, we had Boomer 1, but we also had the Boomer Gritties, means that they're gonna overlayer all the samples here. So Boomer 1 will have all the samples down here and Boomer Gritty will have the same. And now they're overlayered. You can actually overlayer as many as you want and get some enormous sound out of it. And you probably noticed that it had the gate function on as well. So you get that very tempo sync sound. It will obviously tempo sync to your DAW host tempo. Um, you can control the rate of it here and the length of the gate as well. So you can get it really tight or very open here. And you can always right click on anything you want in this library and assign it to your CC switch. And it also goes for the guys down here. Um, I used a little bit of pitch envelope on it too. Let me show you another preset also made with the boomers here. And in this case, you can see the pitch envelope is actually all the way to the left here, meaning that you're gonna get a sort of a bending sound. It almost sounds like a downer, but this is a boomer modified. It's actually reversed as well. And then we're gonna have the pitch envelope go down. So the boomers you just heard, but a little more manipulated. <laughs> So 
So there's actually a lot of stuff going on here. We have the gator on, we've got the stack function, we're reversing the patch, we put the pitch envelope down here. Let me just show what it sounds like in the natural state. So you can hear it sort of bending down when we took the pitch envelope and then put it all the way down here. If you do the opposite direction, it's gonna go the other way around. And on top of that, I also went into the chaos effects here and I signed a little bit of degrader here and assigned it to my mod wheel. So when you move the mod wheel up and down, you're gonna get a little more bit resolution into the sound. Let me show another preset here where I stack the different boomers. I click the stack button here. Boomer one and boomer gritty one are combined. And then I added some convolution rewrite. We have a really big one called wonder here. You can see the mix and the size is. So if you really want that big cinematic boom sound, stack it a little bit, add some reverb and you're done. Let's go down here to the distorted category. These are a little bit like impacts, but very, very gritty in their sound. And we have them three different lengths. You can also control the speed of everything in the library here on the speed knob. Uh, that's essentially time stretching of the sounds. But let's listen to the gritty short, medium, and long in the same fashion we just did with the boomers. What a pleasant sound. Um, as you can see, I like to play some of these sounds in a more rhythmic fashion. Um, I'm also gonna show you a little later on how you can use the sequence and actually create rhythm out of these sounds. But I love using those more impact stuff almost as rhythms by themselves. And they sound super cool when you add percussion on top of them. But uh, let's listen uh, to the gritty longs here as well. like the ultimate like nuclear holocaust sound uh, let me show you um, a little trick here using the gate here and i love actually assigning these things to my mod wheel this is one of the presets you can see is already done and you can control the length of the gate so you can do these really tight sounds and then you can sort of open the gate up a little more loosely and it's just great and in this case i'll use the stack function here combining the gritty medium and the gritty long check it out I also love playing around with our stereo delay. Um, in this one here, it's called the station mega delay. Uh, you can see I took the delay here and moved the stereo delay uh, a lot up here. A really good trick with the delay. Um, a lot of people normally just use the delay, but remember to add a little bit of filter to it. This one is a little lighter on the filter, so it's not exactly gonna delay the sound, but you get a little more of that high end if you move the filter a little bit up here. We're also combining with our wonder convolution reverb again to make it even bigger. As I mentioned earlier, you can also make rhythms out of the individual sounds. We actually have a comprehensive rhythm module with pre-made rhythms in the library that can also be mingled. But in this case, we're actually gonna take the gritty sounds here and make a sequence out of them by running them through our step-based sequencer here. If you wanna do odd time signatures, that's a question we often get here. You can click up here and you can do whatever signature you want. Right now, we're just gonna play eight of them, but let's say you wanna do 15, 16 notes, you just click up here and you can do that. But uh, let's go back to eight here. Uh, you can control a variety of arpeggiation patterns down here. Um, octaves, swing, how many repetitions you want, what rate you want it in. But when you hold down one key, it's obviously just gonna repeat the note. And that, and that sounds very machine gunning, but when you combine many of them, 
you can actually start building patterns. Let me show a little bit here. Um, we call this the distorted sequencer or rhythm maker. Next up is one of my favorite categories. We call these guys the downers. These are sounds that all have one thing in common and that is that they drop in pitch over time. And one of the great aspects about this new user interface, obviously, is that you can do manipulation of sounds really quickly. In this case, we're going to go back to the gate and we're going to gate the downers as they go down and add a little bit of distortion to them as well, again, here on the degrader. And I highly encourage you, if you want to do more automation, to right click on these guys here and sign them to your mod wheel and really try to do crazy things in real time. All the presets have right of things built in, but if you want to push it even further and make it more your own, just right click on these guys and see what happens. I sign them to different CCs and just a knob around. But uh, check these guys out. This is the downers gritty gated distortion. You can also do this cool thing here by reversing them. Um, if you click the reverse button here, you can essentially reverse every single sample in the library. A really important part of the new user interface is our stretch function. You're gonna find it down here in the very bottom of the interface. And um, when you unclick it here, you have access to all the individual samples here. But when you click stretch, the last sample you've been playing is now stretched over the entire keyboard. So in essence, the last sample you have played, you click stretch, and now that sample is assigned to the entire keyboard here. It's really cool if you want to do more octave kind of stuff with it. So that's the same sample just played over a couple of octaves. And again, you can control the speed here. As you may have noticed, that sound was actually the same no matter where I played it in terms of its length because the speed was the same here. But let's say you want it a lot slower, you dial it down here, or you want it faster, you can do it here. And that means you can tempo sync it completely to your composition no matter uh, how extreme it is. Next up is our impact category. This is really, as the name implies, a lot of impacts. And there are hundreds and hundreds of these guys here. Let me just uh, demonstrate a little bit from each of the banks here. They're really cool. We also have these other categories of impacts that have a short and long crescendo to them. So you get a little bit of that whoo, and then the impact happens. Really cool as well. So a little bit like a whoosh going into an impact. Really cool if you need that crescendo effect sort of going into an explosive part of your composition.
some really powerful sounds in there. Uh, let me show you another preset here, also using the impacts here. In this case, I click the stack function and you can see I stack impact hits one and impact hits two. And in this case as well, there's a little bit of pitch envelope. Uh, let me show you why that's a good idea. If you listen to this sound, for example, but once you dial it up, you get a little more of that, ooh, like initial attack. So it can be really useful to generate a little more distinct attack sound on, if you will. Uh, let's listen to it. Now the cool thing is to take the impacts and then uh, use our reverse function and then mess them up with our chaos effects as well here. You can see reverse and then the, a little bit of chaos effects mangled into it. Uh, it's super easy to do. It's very, very easy to create presets. As you can see here, these things are in real time. It's just a, a couple of uh, switches here and we're all good. Uh, you can click on the chaos effects, add a little bit of delay and uh, maybe a little, let's just for fun do this and uh, let's see what it sounds like. And like I demonstrated before, you can also make rhythms with the impacts here using our sequencer. In this case, I stacked two different sounds and we're gonna go back to the sequencer here and activate it using the down up arpeggiation pattern here. Let's check it out. Next up are the mega horns. These guys are somewhat self-explanatory, but imagine like Titanic taking off or something like that. And uh, then you got the mega horns. And one of the cool things about the interface here is that you can also put sort of a motion to them. In this case, you can see the pitch envelope is all the way down. So you can get more of a downer motion. So these are almost like downer mega horns. Uh, let me show another variation here of the mega horns as well. And even the mega horns can be sequenced in a more rhythmic fashion. Let me show you here. Isn't it cool? Who would have thought like mega horns could actually be like rhythmic instruments in their own right? Uh, let's move on to the risers here. Let me demonstrate both the risers, short, long, the gritty risers here as well. And as you can see, these have different lengths. And again, always use the speed control here if you need them to adapt uh, tempo-wise to your composition. But let's listen to the individual categories here a little bit. And even though like reversing is like the oldest trick in the book, it actually sounds really cool to do it on the risers. There's something interesting about stacking four different categories of risers and just clicking reverse on it. Check it out. And also using the pitch envelope on the riser. So in this case, we're gonna make the risers go down in a downer fashion while they're rising. Mm. 
And of course, the stretch function down here is always uh, available. Let me just show you here um, a single stacked greedy short combined. So meaning that I selected the last sample, click stretch, and now we have a combination of both greedy short one and greedy short two using a pitch envelope in the other direction, meaning going from high to low. Let's listen to it. We also got these very cool, techy, transforming, morphing kind of sounds. Let's check them out here. And as you can see, I was fooling a little bit around with the speed controls here. Um, let me do that a little more here. Uh, you can see on this one here, I've assigned the speed uh, to my CC1 or my mod wheel. Uh, it's just fun to play around with speed while you're playing these sounds as well. And even something as wild as these sounds can actually also be run through the sequence and you can make really strange transforming kind of rhythms with them. <laughs> But speaking of rhythms, one of the beautiful things about HyperTools 1 here is the rhythm department. So I've shown you right now how you can use the sequencer here to create your own rhythms, but the library actually comes with a variety of rhythms. You can see each of these categories here has a unique sample per key down here. So a variety of different tempo sync rhythms that you can use. Uh, let me just show you a little bit what they sound like. Obviously we have sort of accented rhythms here that don't have a standard pulse. We got low, mid, and high pulses here that are more standard kind of beats. But let me just show you um, a couple of samples from each of these categories. They're awesome. Very techy, underscoring, modern, very pulsing, really got great uh, cinematic quality to them. And if you really want to push the rhythms to a realm they've never been before, you can actually stack them as well. Uh, for example, here I took the rhythms low and rhythms high, and then you go into the sequencer and you just trigger the initial part of the rhythms. So you can actually just play them stacked together in a normal fashion, so you'll be playing the low and high together. But in this case, we're actually sequencing the early part of the rhythm in a sack up pattern down here. It's crazy stuff. And you can see how much the pitch envelope actually affects things. Let me just try the same thing here again, and it's just the move the pitch wheel one more time here. Uh, let's see what happens. We also got this awesome synth addition to the library. We call these our bonus synthesizers, and there's a lot of them in the library. One of the great aspects is that we have multiple synthesizers loaded here at the same time. These are multi-sample synthesizer articulations, and they can actually be stacked in real time. So what I really like to do when I'm looking for a particular fat bass is that I'll essentially click the stack button here, and then I'll design my own preset very quickly, and I'll do it with my ear. I'll listen to the sound like this, and I was like, all right, let's listen a little bit. It's cool to get that little bit of grip on top. So 
that fog it was a little too distorted super fat right and of course you can also appetate the synthesizer this is one of my favorite things here um, i should mention also um, you probably heard in this video a lot of filtering going on all the presets have filter on the mod wheel as default, just so you can sculpt it a little more. But in this case here, you can see the pitch envelope is a little bit down here. We're playing with five different stack patches together here. And you can see here, we picked the up down uh, motion for the arpeggiation here. Check it out. Because there's so many patches playing together here and so much stuff going on, you get a very analog kind of sound to it. It's not your normal dead contact synthesizer here. Uh, let me play you another um, arpeggiation here as well using a stack function here and combining a variety of different synthesizers. Notice the gate was on here and the length of the gate was running together with the filter as well. And I just left this gate here for synthesizers. Uh, let me show another patch here with three different ones combined here and the gator as well. And if you notice down here, there's a little bit of offset. So I'm actually going into the sample. If you want a lot of variation in synthesizers, you essentially just move this one a little bit. Again, you can also right click on it, uh, but you're gonna get a lot more natural variation in the synthesizers by constantly moving the offset of where the sound actually begins. I mean, there's so much you can do here with the synthesizers alone. Uh, let me play one last example here where I'm actually gonna increase the speed. You can see we set the rate to 132 here. You obviously got right different speed levels here, but it's really interesting. You can create these very swirling analog, really fast kind of arpeggiations here as well. And with that said, let's also wrap up the video here. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this little introduction to our new Hybrid Tools 1. The new beautiful user interface here, all the individual features we put in the library here, including the chaos effects, but particularly these front-faced effects, the ability to sequence your sounds, have full control over all these functions here, whether it's speed, pitch envelope, reverse feature, stretching. You can also click chaos, which randomizes all the individual things you're seeing here. Stack function here, being able to put everything together. The chaos effects here on the back side. We often get questions why they're called chaos effects, actually. If you look at this symbol here, it means you can actually randomize the effects as well. So there's a lot of stuff going on with the library here you got the gate function as well the ability to control length rate all that stuff but if you ever need a little bit of help with the library just click the information icon up here and you get a really brief overview of all the individual functions in the library here but as i said let's wrap the video up here by listening a little bit to the synth arp swirl here thank you so much for watching